Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back, listeners, to the finest phototainment in the world. That's right, you're listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, an irreverent look at wedding photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Dustin, we got an awesome episode coming today. We recorded with Tom Stewart and Greg Campbell from the Snapping Podcast. Tom's from Australia, Greg's from New Zealand. Scheduling this was a bit difficult compared to when we normally yeah. have guests on, but I am incredibly excited. Not to talk to the past or the future. We'll just have to find out. We were talking to the future. Oh, damn. So much for the surprise there, Steve. <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. Um, Here, let's roll it back through time, and now you can Ooh, just, yeah. Past future. Steve, are we going to be I th- talking to the past or the, the future? Who, I'm not who, really sure. Who knows, Dustin? Certainly not I. Thank you so much for tuning in this week to the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast. We have with us Greg Campbell and Tom Stewart from the Snapping Podcast, and we are so incredibly excited to have them on. I've spoken several times before in the past about how I'm a huge fan of their show, so I'm kind of geeking out over here, even though I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to contain it a little bit. Um, but Greg, do you want to... Do you want to say hi so people can get to know your voice a little bit? Sure. Hello. Yeah. So I'm Greg. I'm in New Zealand right now. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having having us. And Tom, do you want do you want to say hi and tell everybody where you're from too? I'd love to. Hey guys. Hey Dustin. Hey Steve. Uh, very honored that you guys are, are talking with us today. Thanks for taking time. Uh, I'm just near Sydney in Australia. And, and what is it, Barrel or Barrel? <laughs> I'm going to let you keep going. Bagel? Keep Is it bagel? <laughs> a bagel. Oh, I wish. It's close to bagel. Are you ready? It's I've called- heard you say it on your podcast several times, but I can't, I can't quite remember it. It's barrel. Okay. Barrel. 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 Like, kind of like bowel yeah. movement, but kind of rolled together. <laughs> Gosh, doesn't. Just all rolls out. Well, you yeah. could have also said like barrel as in B-E-R-R-E-L, but uh, you know, I'll go, let's go with bowel movement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so can I ask a serious question here, guys? Um, for those listeners out there who are ignorant and live in America, um, which is most of our, uh, demo, um, are you guys, are you guys on, on, are you in Wednesday or are you, where are you in the time spectrum? Cause we're, t- I think I, we're talking to I'm, you in the future right now. Yeah. Are you, where are you? Are you Tuesday? We're in Tuesday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, you should say Wednesday. It's incredible. Yeah, Wednesday's the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to get to Wednesday. I'm. I held the uh, cup for being first. I'm the, in the first time zone. First to Wednesday. Woo! So you guys don't have Halloween over there, do you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's happening uh, right now. It's like a pathetic, like Southern Hemisphere attempt at copying <laughs> your cultural Agreed. like ideas. It's crap here. Like, like a. Like a stepchild of Halloween? Like an unwanted, illegitimate, like <laughs> bastard. Of, if you walk down the street tonight, you'll see like two, you'll see two impoverished children like with the spider web draped around their heads. And then three out of, four out of five houses they knock on, some drunk dude will be like, get off my lawn. And then the last house will give them like a, a minty or something. <laughs> minty. So it sounds like that maybe the tradition wasn't completely passed down. That, you know, people are supposed to give candy. No, there was the lost in translation a little bit. There might be like a granola bar or something like that handed out. A strawberry. A strawberry. A strawberry. <laughs> Very health conscious over there. We give fruit to <laughs> Yeah, but are you guys mid you you it's a big deal, right? Halloween in North America, like I just don't really. It's a huge deal. My wife just got back from a wedding vendor uh, Halloween party. And there have been several other oh, like cool. Halloween parties going on throughout the week. There's a there's like a town inside of Indianapolis called Irvington that has like a huge Halloween festival every year that goes for an entire week, and they do like parades and all other sorts of cool stuff and. I was wow. there like a week ago or two weeks ago to shoot a wedding and they were doing like haunted tours at night and stuff. Sick. People go crazy for Halloween here in America. Like a week for us to let our freak flag fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, that actually sounds really fun. I mean, it's really nice to see that happening. And all my North American friends right now are, um, uh, I guess you call it carving pumpkins. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and we don't even have those pumpkins. Like if you try to carve a pumpkin here, it will not work that well because they're just normal little... Are you the same, Greg? Like you don't have those yeah, big yeah. North American no. pumpkins. 
No, you don't do that kind of stuff. No. Interesting. So you guys have more like smaller gourds, not like the giant pumpkins. <laughs> exactly. Like well, butternut squash. All them yeah, like sweet yeah. potatoes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Try a couple more of those. It'll just collapse. It's vicious. Making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so Dustin and I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about two topics, and then we're going to ask you guys some more questions about your your businesses and what you guys do and how you run things over there. The, the first thing we wanted to talk about was what are you guys' thoughts about the new Photoshop that's coming out for the iPad? Do either of you use an iPad? Nope. This is going to be a very short uh, yeah. response from both of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> one, I, one, I didn't know there was Photoshop on the iPad. Nice, <laughs> nice. Two, I didn't know there was a new Photoshop for the iPad. Even better. <laughs> it was just, was that, uh, that was like literally released what, today, right? Yeah, a few hours ago. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's how current uh, we are here at the Wedding Photo wow. Hangover podcast. And, and here's, here's me in the future on Wednesday. <laughs> no idea what's going on. Completely in the past. dark. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, what do you think, Tom? I don't even have an iPad. Oh, actually, no, that's a lie. I have an iPad to like the second generation so it has not it doesn't have a retina screen it's like um probably 10 years old it's very early um and so yeah i mean i think it's a great idea but it, it doesn't affect i don't know like i actually don't i actually don't think i'd use it mm-hmm. i mean maybe just to cull but i don't know about you greg but i don't know for me it's an it's a total non-event but we're talking photoshop not lightroom either like what like how would that impact your workflow or how could it I think, uh, is it possible? Uh, yeah, look, I don't own an iPad, so it's it's hard for me. Um, <laughs> no, we're really, we're, the stereotype of the of our country is just really shining through. No, yeah, I'm not like, helping. I feel like the iPad. I've got, two, I've got two laptops. Does that help? There you go. <laughs> I feel so like you guys say that you're technologically inept, but you guys have both switched over to shooting with Sony cameras entirely, yeah. right? So yeah. you guys are yeah, living yeah, in a future true. that I only dream of because I'm still on Canon. Oh, Hey man, make it happen. Sony's it's good. <laughs> the, the future is good. Don't let us take over your post cup, your your podcast as well with our Sony preaching. We'll do it. We we feel guilty about how much we talk about Sony, but it's funny because in the last episode we did. I mean, Tom, I could just go on, and Tom, he sort of like stops me. But just like on, on our Facebook group, all these people are now we telling us they want to hear more about Sony stuff. Can I just say one thing about the iPad? Someone yeah. told me. That you can cull a wedding on the iPad, but you can link it to your gallery. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a thing? That is a thing. I guess that's pretty cool. You can sit yeah. on the couch and just flick through and do one stars or whatever, and it links. To, I've never tried it, obviously, because I haven't got an iPad, but uh, that could be handy. I think that'd be useful. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the I feel like the iPad's one of those things that Apple puts out for me personally that I'm always like, God, that looks so sexy and sleek, mm. and then I always get one, never use it. Mm. I'm like, well, there went seven hundred dollars. Dustin, you have a history of paying money for things you're never going to use. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> yeah. more of just a Dustin thing in general. I, think. I kind of picture, I picture a, a use for it to be if you put your images onto your main drive, whatever drive you use, working drive, and then you can somehow sync or get your smart previews to transfer or sync across to your iPad. I guess that means you could, for example, you could be sitting on the couch watching a movie, and you could be culling on your iPad instead of having to use a laptop or a or sitting at your desk. So I guess that would be an appealing thing, but I'm sure this is something that has been an option for the last who knows how long. Like that's how behind we are on on uh, on this. I don't know. Is that how you guys would use it? So you guys talked a lot in your last episode about how you call. You guys, uh, mm. I think Tom, Tom, are you the one who uses a grid and Greg, you're the one who just clicks through one at a time? That's right. So... Yep. Like for me, I'm typically like I, I switch back and forth between like a grid depending on what I'm picking from and going through one at a time depending on like if I need to see things bigger or whatever. So I'm like constantly going back and forth. And for me, it's just so easy to use the arrow keys. And then mm. I don't use one star. I use uh, the flag. So P and U, you're wrong, pick and unpick. I know. <laughs> wrong in so many ways. And I just think to myself like if I'm calling on a touch screen how is it going to make it easier than using the arrow, like just the arrow keys and, you know, two letters? Uh, the new iPad actually it, has a keyboard. What? Like a pop-up keyboard. In, yeah. No, it has yes, like mine. a, kind of like this Microsoft Surface, like the whole like overlay, you know, like the screen protector what do you mean? with the Does keyboard this, built in. Wait, was this just announced like just now? Have I just missed an announcement? Yeah, yeah it, it just came yeah. this morning. You were sleeping, oh Gregory. God. Get on it, mate. 
I just realized I was going to get up early and watch it this morning. Have I missed a keynote? <laughs> Greg is, is gutted, by the way. Holy. Right now, Greg is absolutely gutted because he <laughs> never misses, he never misses uh, Apple events. I completely forgot. It was in Brooklyn, Greg. In Brooklyn. All right. Uh, I'm just, um, uh, you guys talk amongst yourselves. I'm, I'm looking at Apple stuff for a second. <laughs> I, I have another comment. So the, the iPad, the, the Photoshop and Lightroom on the iPad to me is a little bit like the uh, the whole loop deck thing. I'm assuming you guys are quite familiar with the loop deck and these types mm-hmm. of editing consoles yes. or whatever. Uh, do you guys use loop decks? No. It's been okay. one of those things that I tell my wife if she really wanted something to get me for Christmas, it would be kind of cool. Yeah. Every year for Christmas, I'm really disappointed. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, know, I know the pain, my friend. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's like, I, I sometimes wonder if these sort of things actually increase workflow or if they are just things that are cool and then you're like, you know what? The keyboard's really good, you know? Yeah. I don't know that guy who invented arrow keys, but man, he was onto something with those. <laughs> Jimmy Arrow. Jimmy Arrow. <laughs> Think about the royalties he's getting. Oh, yeah. Do you guys use iPads arrow. for editing and culling? Use it to watch Netflix when I'm on a plane. That's what I do too. That's like the perfect thing to use them for. That is the ultimate. It's the best thing for an iPad, yeah. Yeah, they're just not quite like, and that's why I, I haven't ever uh, invested in one because a laptop, a laptop's great because when you're in bed, you've got the keyboard like flat on your on your stomach and the, the screen's vertical. It just works perfectly. If that was a an iPad, I'd have to be holding it up right and then trying to like swipe. And then for professional use, you know, uh, a desktop or a laptop is, is just so much better. It's just mm-hmm. not quite there. But I'm looking at this one now with the built-in, is it a built-in keyboard or is it one of these ones where it magnet it magnetizes on the back i don't think it's built in i think it magnetizes yeah Mm. magnetizes but what the one cool feature they added which has no bearing on us is the i think it's more designed towards illustrators is the the pen that they have now Mm. magnetizes to the side and because the batteries run around the edge of the ipad it actually charges using kinetic energy uh charges the pen while it's stuck to it so you guys should know about that because you're in the future so that just sounds like some real futuristic sci-fi stuff (laughs) here in america we can't grasp that man i i am embarrassed because i honestly i get up and watch and for us i gotta get up at five o'clock in the morning to watch these keynotes and i do it and i i knew there was one on this morning and i just completely forgot i we we just get into our private jet funded by our sponsors and then oh, really? we, we go to the future, <laughs> we watch these, we go back in time so that we can sound educated enough to talk to amazing people <laughs> like you. So we seem hey, sort of smart. Yeah. Hey, can I ask it's, you guys a question? Yeah. What is the capital city of Australia? Ooh. Mm, that is a great <laughs> question. I went to um, art school. Tom? Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. Just I, I know this it. one, and I'm definitely not Googling it right now. Isn't it Sydney? Um, it's not Sydney. It can't be Sydney. That'd be too, too easy. Uh, uh, look, we'll, we'll come back to I that. I want to say Canberra, Camera, yeah. Cam something. We'll, we'll take that. We'll take that. And they totally didn't edit out all that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 got yeah, it, got yeah, it, got it, got it. Got it. Uh, I knew the whole time, didn't Google this. It's Canberra. Got it. Done. Yes. Ah, nice. Uh, Isn't it just to the west of Reed? Have you Googled it now too, Dustin? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to remember yeah. my geography. <laughs> and then, Isn't Google Maps it's, incredible? It's near, <laughs> it's near the Australian National University, right? It really is. Okay. You're absolutely yeah. right. Your, your, your geographical wow. knowledge blows my mind, my friend. That's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so the other thing we wanted to float past you guys topic wise, you guys both used Yong Neo flashes mm-hmm. last year, year and a half ago, sometime around then, right? I remember you guys talking about it. I think I had one. I think I Tom think I said you kind of tried it out, but Greg was using them for a while. Oh, uh, I was right? deep. I was I was deep deep in the Yong Neo hole. Deep in the Yong Neo. Um, yeah, you guys talk. I want to show you something. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Show and tell time. <laughs> so yeah, Greg. I'm pretty sure uh, I know what he's getting. He's going to come out with like 50 young newer flashes because Greg has a problem getting rid of old gear. He can't. <laughs> well, how are you going to get rid of them? They only cost that. like 60 bucks a pop. <laughs> yeah. so. You just got to put them, put them in the bin basically. Oh no. <laughs> oh, wh- what did I tell you? <laughs> Greg, what is this? So did you just use them until they broke, which didn't take very long, I assume. And then- <laughs> like a couple of weeks. 
Yeah, a couple of weeks. I just bought one one every week. <laughs> um, so for people that can't see, that's eight young new flash boxes. I'm just a, um, I'm imagining, I have nine nine flashes. Imagining that bridal consult, Greg, where the bride's like, I just don't understand. Your prices <laughs> are so high, and you're like, Well, you you have to understand. I have to buy a new speed light. It's a new fl- flash. <laughs> yeah, I have to buy a new flash for every single bride. Every hour. <laughs> it's a nine-hour wedding. That's nine flashes. And you tell the bride, you get the flash at the end of the day. Yeah, you can keep the flash. I make a nice pendant um, <laughs> of a flashes. Nice pendant. <laughs> very flashy jewelry you got on there. Yeah, it's very flashy. Well, they all can- they're all cannon mount, Greg. They're all for your all for your cannon. Yeah, they're they're yeah. terrible. Don't don't. Yeah. Do, are we? Uh, no, I need to understand. Are you in Do favor of Yongnu you? or yeah. against? Because uh, <laughs> so we're, we're sponsored <laughs> by Yongnu. <laughs> <laughs> these things are great, great flashes. Wow, these are incredibly good. One use flashes. <laughs> One use flashes. Just disposable disposable flashes. <laughs> I have three of the Yongnu flashes that are working, and then two that I've broken by. Mm. Putting them no, in you my bag, broken. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> By touching um, them lightly. Yeah. But I've uh, I've actually dealt with. There's like a dealer here in the U.S. who you can buy like new parts from, and I've actually bought oh. like parts from him and fixed some of the young new flashes because like when they're wow. working, they look almost indecipherable from like a Canon flash to me, and so it's like we we only use them when Jen and I, my wife, uh, we both shoot, and sometimes we're both shooting in different places at the same time, and so it's like one of us needs flashes and we didn't want to invest in a bunch of other canon flashes so we just bought young new mm. ones mm. but the topic i wanted to bring up is young new <laughs> it w- was released today on on petapixel broke the news yeah they're developing a mirrorless camera and it looks like it's yeah, going it. to be yeah it looks like it's going to be like an android based uh touch screen on the back and they're yeah doing like a con- voting contest sort of thing right now, They're, to name it, it's either going to be called the 4G camera or the smart camera, and they haven't decided on which yet. How do we not know about this? Hey, dude, I have already voted. I know all about this. I already put in a suggestion for a name. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So, yeah, that was the other thing I was going to get to, is they also said <laughs> you could throw <laughs> in suggestions if you didn't like the suggestions that uh, they had of 4G and smart camera. Oh, nice one. Um, yeah, man, I saw that. I reckon that's such a cool thing. So I must like the Young New page because it came up on my newsfeed on um, on Facebook. And okay, so I I didn't like either of the names that much. I mean, 4G camera, smart camera. They they kind of they're a little bit too I don't know too easy, mm-hmm. too bland. I can I can see your name, Greg. I can see it. Hey hey hey! Can you see a couple that's of people a crap have liked? Name. They've liked my one. What name? Uh eight people, mate. Eight. It was only oh, two that's this morning. Shocking. Uh, can you tell them what it is, Tom? Because I can't find it. Okay, you guys ready to have your minds uh, blown? I'm, my <laughs> mind is waiting here, ready to explode. The Greg's name for this new camera is the YN1 smart camera. Because <laughs> of the way they name their flashes and everything. I was waiting for this snapping camera. <laughs> no, actually, I saw someone else had called it that, and um, I and I say, hey, I like the sound of that, but. <laughs> YN1, it means it means it's like Yongnu 1, but who cares? That means there's room for the Yongnu 2. I, I thought it was a very, uh, it was a sensible name. I, I could have gone silly with it, but I thought it was sensible. I've just submitted my name. Yeah, Tom, you'd better do a silly one. What is it? Oh, I, just, I just said, just call it James. <laughs> just call it James. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the sort of the Google naming where it's just like Kit Kat or. Yeah, Kit Kat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Hey, but do you see? Do you see what it looks like? It looks kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of what Hasselblad tried to do with their mm. phone. It reminded me as you were talking about it, not so much when I see it, but you know, did you guys see the the Zeiss mirrorless that they're making? Mm. The little I've the heard Zeiss about one? it. I have not yeah. seen it. I, I reckon. I recommend you have a look at that. That thing looks super bizarre, and but it looks really cool. And I like that camera. I like that sort of not major manufacturers are doing stuff like this. Like it it keeps the fire going, you know, and mm. pushes boundaries. And then main manufacturers are always like, like they can't sit back and just not do anything. They have to think forward. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of like the transition from like the 
blackberry sort of like smartphones like what we have now like android and iphone mm. where we've kind of as we go from dslrs to mirrorless we're entering into this new territory and a lot of companies who didn't make cameras in the past are looking at this and they're like there's actually a way for us to break into this business if we want to get in whereas in the past is mm. like how are we going to compete with canon and nikon like what's even the point mm. Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know did you so you guys do you guys use young new flashes i do you do Okay. Uh, I also have Young Nuo. Uh, is it is it Young Nuo or Young Nuo? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you like. <laughs> Whatever you like. Yeah. It's, Dealer's choice. I mean, I just I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> things that are technically Young yeah. Nuo. Young Nuo. No, I'm, young, I, I don't know a lot about the Asian languages, so I'm not really certain. But um, they haven't done themselves any favors by by naming the. Young well, I mean, I guess that the target market is not illiterate white people. It's probably <laughs> the rest of the world. Young Nuo. Tom, I saw that you were saying somewhere recently that you weren't a big fan of Godox anymore. Mm. Oh, I've developed like a, a bitter hatred for completely Godox. Completely off Godox. <laughs> um, they're, they're dead to me. Why, why is that? Because I just bought one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, you got to start listening to the Snappening podcast and then you know these things. <laughs> Tom's out there doing the research. <laughs> I had Yong Yu and I've had Canon as well, um, but I was like... Uh, like you, I, I thought if I get Yongyu, I can buy more of them for cheaper. But they just uh, were unreliable in mm -hmm. the end. And um, But I moved to Godox and the, the thing I liked was the Godox have the um, lithium ion battery rather than the, the, the double A's. Yeah. And I've been really happy with the Godox, like very, very happy. I, I got two of the larger models. I don't remember what they're yeah, called right now. Yeah, I bought right the now. one that has like the wireless trigger built into it. Mm. Like whatever mm. oh, like yeah, the yeah. newest the, one is. The eight something? I don't, I don't know. Uh, anyway, and I got the little tiny three, the three one, Tom, which is what you were saying wasn't. Did you say, Tom, that you didn't think that was strong enough for dance floor shots? Did you make uh, that comment? Yeah, the little guy. Yeah, but the one I had was not the lion one. It was the it was the double A one. So is there? I think there's a lithium ion one of that. Hey, yeah, That's the lithium ion yeah, yeah. one is the one that has like great reviews. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I yeah. I got the what what I did basically is had the double A ones. I had that little guy, the three fifty, I think it is, and I had a bigger one, which is a six something, six eighty five, maybe. Um, and I had the double A versions of both and I used them for a few weddings and, and they were terrible. And so then I proceeded to then, um, basically assume that all Godox flashes were terrible. And I proceeded to talk all about that, <laughs> which maybe was a, a little, uh, a little early of me to say that because, um, yeah, mm. heaps of people have been, been coming back and being like the, the lithium ion ones are awesome. Yeah. And one guy reckons he, yeah. he doesn't have to recharge it. It takes four weddings yeah. of use before he has oh. to recharge. That's wow. amazing. Well, that's that's interesting because I used mine for a really big wedding on Sunday and then I went to charge it and it's got a, like, it shows you how many bars when mm -hmm. you're charging and it just needed one more bar to be full. So it had used one of four or five. Uh, maybe I should but, order one. But Tom I, and, and you two, um, this is the V350, which is the little one mm -hmm. with, with lithium iron. I'm thinking of just selling these big guys and getting only these little ones interesting. because yeah. it's great and it's so much lighter and- one one thing is like this takes a different lithium ion battery to the 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 big one takes a different one to the little one which is a bit annoying mm -hmm. when you're charging. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe if I just have all little. So yeah, I've been I've been really happy with them, Tom. So what you're is saying is it the V? No, no. Yeah, Sorry, the V3 yeah. the V350. Greg, what you're saying is you prefer little ones to big ones. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> make, making sure we get that on on the podcast here. Now, if you ask my wife, it's not the size that counts. <laughs> He likes little ones that last for a long time. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a rebuttal. <laughs> I'm coming up with nothing. <laughs> okay. I can see the um, uh, I can see the vibe of this podcast. I really can. I it like just it. feels better in the hand, you know. The little one does, or the big one? A little. <laughs> How can I win? I can't win in this. <laughs> Craig's cornered. Part of the reason I reached out to you guys is I feel like you guys have a very similar vibe to ours where you kind of give each other a hard time and talk about stuff and make <laughs> jokes. And I feel like that's missing a lot in the photography podcasting world, like mm. having a sense of humor and like being able to poke fun of like the things that are coming out. I feel like everybody's all about that education and like we got to teach X amount of points today. And I would rather get, you know, like 20 laughs from a listener than <laughs> really, really leave them thinking like I came away from this one and I learned so much. So I agree with you. And one of the things I was really hesitant at the start to do a podcast, Greg had to really work on me for a while 
just because I thought I would have no time. And I've actually found it really rewarding. But one of the things that I thought of from the start was that we're all, most wedding photographers of our um newer i would say new, of our age group and our our style it's, it's you know things are different to how they were i don't know 20 years ago but we're mostly just working for ourselves so when we when we go to work we're by ourselves, and when we come home and we edit we're by ourselves, and it can get a bit lonely mm-hmm. and like often we rely on these online communities to bounce ideas off each other and to feel like we we are in a community and so yeah um things that i happen to me at weddings that i'm like oh man that that was so shitty and i wish i could i wish i could vent to someone turns out there's like a bunch of other photographers who are like that happened to me and you know it makes me feel better that someone else has been through that and i and and i really enjoy them venting about that because i was like yeah man that that sucks so yeah i agree (laughs) with you i agree with you you know um yeah yeah. i mean a a lot of photographers you know some prefer small things in their hands and some prefer more more heavy um, more girthy a good girth weighted i mean it's whatever you want to put on your hot shoe really at the end of the day um (laughs) He's Dustin. Jeez. <laughs> hey, uh, can I ask uh, you two American guys a question? Um, <laughs> so, what are you Americans? You what are you actually? Yeah, now listen. No, what are you actually <laughs> shooting with? Uh, what bodies and what lenses? Shooting with this body, as you see it right here. Imagine you get turned down quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, ab- <laughs> Sorry, <bro>. absolutely. <laughs> no, so photo wise, we shoot all Nikon currently. We're in the market to transition to Sony is what we're kind of leaning towards right now because we also, like you young chaps, do video as well. And mm. we have uh, three Sony bodies for that. We got three Nikons and three Sonys. And um, it's not, it's been, you know, I have a ton of Nikon glass. And so I'm not quite ready to shed all of that until the end of wedding season. What what would be your like two or three go to lenses, uh, Dustin? Sorry, Steve. D- Steve, Dustin. Dustin. That's Dustin. Dustin's a good looking Dustin. one. Um, Pokemon hat. <laughs> Pokemon hat. Uh, I shoot on a wedding day primarily. I start the day off with the fifty, then I move to the twenty four to seventy for the ceremony, and my wife's on the seventy to two hundred. And then we move to the eighty five for portraits, whereas my wife's on the twenty four to seventy for portraits. And then wow. I'm b- I'm back on the 24 to 70 for the entire reception. Right. Yeah, okay, cool. And yes. we have all of those lenses for uh, Sony, except for the 85. Um, but we've been doing a lot of photo video tag teaming where we're doing both. And I've got guys there doing video while we do photo. So sure. I can't dip into the Sony bag. And just easier too when you're editing, if you're editing all one cohesive Agreed. color profile totally agree with you i mean dustin if i'm shooting video with you and you try to rip the a7r3 out of my hands to do a photo i would murder you <laughs> he's very territorial of my equipment <laughs> so Dust, dustin shoots with no wait you both do you both shoot with your wives yes we shoot with our wives so that our wives don't shoot us i was gonna say let's let's have an honest discussion here about uh about you know how how much of a good thing this is for our relationships because you know i i found shooting with my wife it took quite a while to get used to mm-hmm. is it, am i just alone here no no i heard the tone of your voice and i want to dig into that mm-hmm. a little bit more <laughs> um took you quite a while to get used to it uh so you fought a lot at the beginning is that is that what i'm hearing uh yeah uh so jen started her business without me and then I okay. like came on. And so like most of my life I've been, uh, like I, I went to school for video production and like I was doing video work. So I knew the basics of shooting and stuff, just not when it was a still photo as opposed to video. So when I came on with her, like she had to kind of, um, work with me on shooting photo. And we got into a lot of fights when we first started, <laughs> Um, mostly based on things like I would be like, you can't shoot from this angle because if you do the, when you go to the other shot, like my shot, their eyes won't be pointed towards each other. Um, because Mm. I'm thinking like somebody doing video and I'm like, if I'm cutting between Mm. the two shots, like I have to know where their eyes are looking and what side I'm leaving the negative space on Mm. and all this other stuff for that sort of thing. And with photography, doesn't really matter so much. All, much all rules go out the window with photography. Yeah, yeah. no way. I'm yeah. like, I can't believe you're breaking the 180 rule right now, Jen. And I just throw my camera on the ground and I walk away. <laughs> you're dead to me, Jen. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the that's kind of why I asked because um, I mean, f- 
for in my sake, I started my business uh, around eight years ago and then Michelle started shooting for me and then now she's starting to do video. And so she's having a lot more autonomy because she's, I don't know anything about video and I can't even shoot video. So she's sort of crafting this on her own. But yeah, it took us uh, quite a while to reach a place where we were cool, waking up next to each other, having breakfast together and then going to work together and then coming home and I don't know, man. Like it's, it's really quite tough. Uh, I really have a lot of respect mm-hmm. for people who do it seamlessly with no issues because, you know, moving from that home relationship to that work relationship, especially in front of clients, can be quite tough. There is nobody who does it seamlessly with no issues. Let's just be <sighs> serious about that. I hope, yeah. There's actually a, a husband-wife team. I don't think they shoot anymore, and I'll probably eat my words if I say their names out loud and find out they still do shoot. Um, but they actually offered, I believe it's in Atlanta, uh, a marriage retreat specifically for husband and wife wedding photographer couples. Oh, I would go to that. Yeah, my wife wanted to go next year, but I think this past year might have been the last year they were doing it. Um, but I, I told Damn. her I don't need to go because I already know what they're going to say, and that is let your wife quit her day job so that she can just be <laughs> home right. more and help you with the business. <laughs> it, it would be the perfect retreat if like you get there and and all the bros go off and like drink beer and one side of the retreat and all the ladies go off and do whatever they want at the other side of the retreat just complain that, about that their be, husbands that, yeah basically yeah, the, the women go and they do knitting and stuff and like we like <laughs> kill, kill see, animals kill animals see i didn't want to be mis- misogynistic and we just lost all of our female listeners thanks tom <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> welcome to australia welcome to australia <laughs> Well, for what it's worth, Kat and I don't ever work together, mm-hmm. ever. Oh, really? But she shoots, so she shoots her own weddings and I shoot my own weddings. And then uh, with video, I get a couple of, um, we call them the kids, a couple of 20-year-olds to come and hold, like be our camera operators. So we don't really cross paths, which mm. I, I mean, I actually, I was staying with you, Tom, uh, what, about two or three, two years ago? And that was when mm. I was like, man, Kat should just be shooting. Yeah, And so I trained her up and she did about 10 weddings with me and then that was it. She was off on her own. And the deal was she was never going to be a second shooter for me because I didn't want that. I didn't want exactly what you guys are talking about. Not because mm. I thought it would ruin us, but just because I love going out and feeling like I'm a lone wolf. Like I'm out there. It's me <laughs> against the world at a wedding. I, I love that. And uh, being able to come home and share like, you know, stories and not just be like, you know, you already know everything that's happened I just like the visual, Greg, of you showing up to like the hotel suite or the bride's house, like wearing like a wolf skin, like jacket (laughs) with like the hood on. And you're like, I'm here to take on the world. (laughs) Oh, what is that saying? I'm here to to kick ass and chew bubble gum. (laughs) I'm all out of gum. (laughs) I've not heard that saying, but I like it. (laughs) Man, I love I love the idea. This is me to a T. Is that um, like in the winter when I haven't been shooting weddings, like my um, my appearance and hygiene just deteriorates so much, <laughs> and then and then boom, first wedding, you got to have a haircut, have a shave, like put on nice clothes for the first time in months. It's great. But but you don't really a- get that because when it's winter in Australia, don't you usually come to America to chase storms? Well, yeah, but chasing storms, I mean, that's, you're not dressing for anybody. I mean, it's, <laughs> if anything, I do, I devolve even more. <laughs> it's like you live at Walmart, you, you drink, you know, soft drinks and, I don't know, eat chips and drink a lot of beer. And <laughs> Aren't the seasons reversed where you guys live? Like I know back when I was in university, as you guys call it, I was told there was a photographer I was trying to get work for or work with. And uh, he split his time between Chicago and Australia, where he would Mm -hmm. spend his summers and I think falls or summer and spring in Chicago shooting. And then he would do his winters in Australia shooting. Yeah, that's, yeah. So you guys are just like gearing up uh, for wedding season right now or? Yeah, yeah. Did right. Yeah. So our summer is just beginning. Yeah. For for me, because uh, in well, New Zealand does get cooler in winter than than it does here in Oz. But for for us here, it doesn't even really stop. Like generally, if if you are a you could if you're a wedding photographer in say Sydney, you could probably be shooting one or two weddings every weekend all through winter, which is July. Um, and then in right now, it's it's really ramping up. Like I had three weddings this past weekend. I think that's pretty normal for a lot of guys. So yeah. It, because it doesn't get cold, like a, a cold winter's day in Sydney could be 
15 degrees Celsius, which is... Google. Was it like 15, 15? Hey, Alexa. degrees 15? Celsius oh, to yeah. Fahrenheit? I'm guessing 50. <laughs> You're 59. <clears throat> so yeah, like it, it's like uh, not a bad temperature to be shooting a wedding or a wedding. So what's the hardest? The, oh, it gets the, really hot. It's bad, man. The hottest I've done was probably 45 uh, Celsius, which is 113. Jeez. Yeah. And that's, no, Australia and that's with, is really it's hot. It's brutal. And that's with like, uh, and that's, you know how you, I don't know if you guys do this, but like one of the things I try and hammer into my clients from the start when they book me is don't have your ceremony in full sun because it, the, not only are the photos like a bit crap, but um, you're going to really regret it, especially if you're in a three-piece suit. You're going to be sweating. And so, yeah, this is weddings where it's pretty common that you'll have someone faint at a wedding in summer. Mm-hmm. Like last year, I had a few with guests that just passed out in the, so in what, the reception because it was too hot. this that it gets that hot? So, it's like ja- January. Okay. January is brutal. February as well. It's almost the reverse. Mm-hmm. You guys probably slow down a little around that time simply because of the heat whereas we slow down because of the cold yeah Mm. i would like to i would like to block off january and not do any it's that bad Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not like that in new zealand though new zealand's much more mild it's still the hottest months but you do have really hot you do have really hot days there right sometimes we'll we'll be we'll be low 30s whereas you'll be mid 40s Oh, it's terrible. Mm. Yeah, the hottest day that I've ever experienced here is was 51.5, which is 124, 124.7. How are you alive? <laughs> mm. I, like uh, this, you walk along the road and your, your feet kind of pull up the pavement like it's sticky Ugh. and yeah, it's really bad. Because you guys are doing both photo and video or well, for Tom, it's your wife and mm. you are splitting kind of between the two. Mm. That's right. And how are how are you guys finding that to work out? Because I know with I'm still trying to figure out like the best way to sort of divide and conquer. Because obviously the bigger the piece of the wedding budget pie you can take, the more money you can make. And wedding video seems to just be the easiest next step. Mm. And so that's what we've been doing. But we're still trying to figure out you know the easiest way of doing that. Whereas mm. Greg just hires some you know some teenagers or kids as he calls them. Some peasants. Just goes out around the street. <laughs> hey, you look like you can handle a camera. <laughs> can you hold the camera? That's that's my criteria. Are you, are you breathing? Are yeah. you breathing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was interesting. Our initial decision to do video was purely financial. So Michelle shot with me, has been shooting with me um, every couple of weddings for probably five or six years. And we were sitting around one night talking about how we can basically – turn make more money and like i've had a lot of ideas over the years like i was like uh, greg and i were going to start doing photo booths as well offering those mm-hmm. and then we realized we realized that it was just too much work while you're trying to shoot a wedding to set up a little photo booth right so, video is much less work <laughs> 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 the returns well, are a lot better so well this is that's interesting you say that yeah because so michelle was like well i'll learn to shoot video and i was like okay Let's do that. So she basically taught herself. So she doesn't come from a film background. She doesn't come from a cinema background, no training in cinema. So her films are definitely not in a, they're not cinematic in a way that um, maybe um, you might see from, from Steve, you you know, like she doesn't have that cinema training. They're basically like, imagine you were going to shoot a wedding and instead of taking a photo, you'd simply record a short amount of footage and then compile that into a clip. So our idea was never to target a, a bride or a groom who wanted a full blown video with, with the highlights plus the speeches, plus all this thing and a full reel of the reception or whatever it was like. Our idea was to target couples who had a little bit of money left over and they wanted some type of video, but didn't want the, the big, you know, the full deal with mm-hmm. all the audio. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, we decided not to even record audio. So we don't even offer any audio, which takes a massive, massive aspect, difficult aspect away from the whole situation. Yeah. And that, and I said to her from the start, I don't know anything about video. So I, I, I don't want to know about it, you know, learn it, figure it out. And, um, and she did, and it seems to be going really well. So the, the labor division is really easy too. Like I just have nothing to do with the video at all. Cause I don't even know how to, how to, how to edit it. You yeah. know? For you, it is easier than a photo booth. <laughs> <laughs> I sold 45 videos this year, honey. Um, 
yeah. have fun with that. You just yeah. walk away. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Pretty much. No, no, it's, it's good. Yeah, I, I would love to have that conversation with my wife. Like, by the way, hon, so this year, I think because we're building a house, i um, going to need you to really step up your video game. I know you've <laughs> never done it, but I think uh, this might be a good, you know, good learning thing for you. Help us bond better. And Tom says it's easier than a photo booth. So <laughs> how hard can it be? Which I know you hate. I know you hate the photo booth, hon. So uh, have you do this. Hey man, I think you should have this conversation and then re- either report back as to how it went or record it and record play it, it back live. There you go. That could be a whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we need marriage counseling. Dustin's <laughs> discussions. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tom, you've got to go. Um, Greg. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry. No, yep. it's fine. I understand. Yep. Uh, Greg, do you want to stick around? And like, we usually do like a thing where we answer questions and kind of. Uh, there are questions that are maybe a little bit more off the wall and weird sort of thing. Do you want to stick around for that or no? Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want you to stay if you have stuff to do as well. (laughs) No, I'm good. I'll stay. Hold hold the torch. You you got me. So then real quick before Tom goes, um, I just want to say thank you both so much for coming on. It has been a blast recording with you guys. And it's kind of like a dream come true for me as a huge fan of your guys' podcast. So thank you both so much. Thanks. Thanks for sharing some of that sunshine with us. (laughs) Thank you so much, guys. It's really kind of you to have us on. If you guys could just blow some of that warm weather our way, that'd be great too. It's getting (laughs) cold here. (laughs) Hey, guys. I just jumped onto greetable.com to do the nicest thing I've ever done in my entire life for Dustin. That's right. I sent him a unique gifting experience complete with pictures of me and a lovely message that I wrote. Oh my gosh. If you want to give your clients that same good, good feeling that I just gave to Dustin, you got to go to greetable.com for all of your go-to gifts for your clients, vendors, and referrals. You can personalize your gift with your very own message like I just did for Dustin and with photos. They don't have to be of yourself, which is what I did for Dustin, but whether they're of yourself or somebody else, those photos are going to be beautiful, high quality prints to go along with that beautiful high quality gift from greetable.com it's a unique experience that's sure to get some love on instagram how do i know it's sure to get some love on instagram i can tell you how because dustin sent me photos after he opened it and asked me if he had to wait for this episode to go live before he could post those photos to his instagram because he was so excited about it So here's what you guys got to do. You got to jump on over to greetable.com. That's G-R-E-E-T-A-B-L dot C-O-M. No, there's no E at the end of greetable. So just G-R-E-E-T-A-B-L dot C-O-M. And once you're there, use code HANGOVER20 for 20% off your first order. I know that's mind blowing. And it's mind blowing to me because when we first talked to greetable about this, They said it was only going to be 15%. Then they threw on another 5% off just for us. So use code HANGOVER20 for 20% off your first order from greetable.com. That's G-R-E-E-T-A-B-L dot C-O-M. And there will be links down in the show notes if you guys want to check down there. So Greg, now that we finally got rid of Tom. Yeah. (laughs) Got that dead weight. Just the good stuff now. Okay. Greg, am I correct? You guys just had a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, three months tomorrow. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Yeah, a little Dallas. Little Dallas. So, do you have any worries going into this next wedding season now that you guys have a kid? Not really. Um, the the problem for us is with cat, me shooting and cat shooting, mm-hmm. we need a, a nanny or a babysitter for basically one day a week, one Saturday. Almost uh, all the weekends in summer, but my mum's local, Kat's mum's local, and we've just found a local babysitter. So it's just a little bit of organizing, but it'll be okay. Um, now, so you, who has kids out of you two? Both of us. We both do. Together. We have kids together. You both go. Okay. So you know about, you have kids together as well. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing what technology can do these days. <laughs> you, you would know all about expressing. Expressing mm-hmm. milk. Is that a thing in America? Yes. So uh, the problem Kat has is she'll shoot a wedding for a whole day and she has to actually like take time out every couple of hours to go and express milk. Otherwise, she's in trouble. Like she gets too full of milk. So you drink it for her. 
So, th- oh wait, you don't shoot together. That's right. No, no, no. She freezes it, and then I, yeah, coffee. Uh, so no, that's the only real yeah on the coffee. That's the only real um thing that's a major issue at the moment. But she's only three months. Every week it gets a little bit easier, and it's okay. So. Dustin and I have both gone through that shooting with our wives. Um, I'm on my second batch Last time I shot with Dustin doing video while he was doing photos, Corinne actually had to take a break to express milk. Right. So, Dustin, you're you're a little bit more recent with this than me because you have a younger child than I do. By one month. (laughs) How old is Max? I'm not talking about you, Charlie. Yep. I always forget about that one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got two kids. One is much younger than yes, the older one. Yes. So, how, how has that impacted like your business over the last year, Dustin? Um, has it had any impact as far as the pumping the milk thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, it it adds definitely it adds like an extra level of stress. Uh, when my wife and I are driving to the wedding, we sit down and we uh, talk through the schedule and we figure out strategically like the best times for it. Um, it's kind of a give and take. Uh, Because it's really important to her and I guess to us to like make sure, you know, we got that sweet, sweet Jesus juice and um, yeah, we make it, make it work. And I've never had her, shouldn't say that we've not had a bride yet that's uh, been like, no, you can't pump, you know, like got to come get these family photos. Um, You know, one of the benefits of this job is uh, when it comes to things regarding pregnancy, our clients who are generally a bride and a groom, uh, the brides are very forgiving mm -hmm. and they understand that kind of stuff. And we've we've found that, yeah, if you're honest with people that they will be very accepting of your situation and and help you any way they can. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't run in. I mean, last year was a little. Or I shouldn't say last year. Our first child was a little trickier, just navigating that. But now that we've gone through it once, the second time around, Mm -hmm. uh, she's a little bit more fearless at like not being afraid to ask uh, venues for like, hey, do you have a room? We're we're discovering that a lot of the larger venues actually have uh, hospitality suites or rooms set aside for specifically this purpose, or you know, just an area. It isn't a bathroom or a broom closet or something. Sure. We yeah. had a situation where Jen talked to a venue once beforehand about making sure there was like a space where she could do that. And when it came time, she like asked the venue coordinator and the venue coordinator was just like, uh, you could, I guess you could do it in the corner of the, like the reception area over there. Mm. And Jen was just like, uh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. I mean, my wife <laughs> has done it like behind the cake table before and <laughs> like she's done it all kinds of crazy places because she's you know this year she's like i don't care it's like i gotta get it done i want to be somewhere convenient whereas before she would go you know our first child she would go out to the car and we have mm. the you know adapters in both our cars so she can like plug it in and do that whole bit and this is i'm realizing quickly this conversation is really weird to have with three white males three, <laughs> three dudes yeah it's i think it's good <laughs> Discussing and all the all the women out there are just waiting for us to screw yeah. up. <laughs> uh, nice one. No, hey. Um, well, I will tell Cat that she uh, should feel comfortable just to uh, ask venues and to um, set herself up behind the cake. <laughs> and, yeah, Cat, um, if you need to, just duck under a table. That way, if anyone comes up for a piece of cake, does it just raise your hand? Be like, anyone? Yeah. Anyone want some milk with the cake? Some milk, milk with the cake, milk and Next sugar. Next to the coffee station, right there, just doing her thing. So, when Cat goes out to shoot, does she have a second shooter with her? No, no, neither of us use second shooters. Uh, so that that would make that would it a little make bit it harder because, like, when my wife would need to re- express, I would be yeah. there with her, and I would just take over. Right. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, Cat, Cat, and I have been talking about just getting. You know how I employ kids off the street uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. to do video. Practically um, a gang. We've been. To- <laughs> We've been thinking about just having one of them come along just, just, and not really as a second shooter, just as a, an assistant. And, um, yeah. And if Kat needs to duck away, I mean, it's amazing. Um, like, a, uh, we could get into a whole second shooter. So you guys, are you always, um, doing a f- photo and video or sometimes you're doing f- main, primary, secondary primary photo photographer for us. And I would say maybe 10 weddings, 10 to 15 weddings a year or video and photo combo. 
and we do about 40 total a year of photo. And when you're not doing video, are you always using a second shooter? Yeah, I would say 90% of the weddings, my wife shoots alongside of me. Right. And the only reason that she wouldn't be is if um, she's got like something with her day job. She's a doctor during the week. And so oh, she wow. does uh, continuing ed every few weekends a year. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, that's a big workload for you guys. For her. For me, it's pretty okay. <laughs> and well, she's doing all the editing too, right? So. No, no. We send that, we send that <laughs> off. Send that off. Don't mess with that. Justin just spends his days watching Netflix and <laughs> yeah, yep. looking busy. Waiting for his doctor wife to come home. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the baby thing is, um, it's all new and exciting, but we're, yeah, we're getting through it. Oh, that's awesome. So you're thinking about hiring an assistant to work with Kat? Yeah. Is that something where it's going to be like just during the busy season you try that out? Or is it going to be like all year round? Sorry to, sorry to ask a ton of questions that might be kind of personal. No, no, no. These are great. Um, you can just say no and let's go to the next thing. No, no, that's cool. Uh, the thing is, well, we've got these two kids um, that do our video and um, if we've not got a video on that day, they are available and they're both very competent um, taking photos as well. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy just to get one of them as as an assistant just to help Kat. And if Kat had to sit down and express, I mean, it's, it's, this is why I was thinking about second shooters. It's not rocket science to pick up a camera and go and take some shots for 10 minutes at a wedding for one of these assistants the photos they take if this camera's all set up they just have to go push the trigger they're going to get some nice photos um they might not be the best but who cares like they do a good job so she's pretty covered in that way i i, I tom and i are both kind of anti second shooters but i didn't want to i don't want to go down that road because it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a bit of a quagmire see i am like jen and i don't shoot weddings without second shooters anymore so like if I'm gone shooting a wedding, she's gone shooting a wedding. And if we have an associate shooting a wedding, it's like we have to find three second shooters wow. for that day to work with us. Wow. And so do you have a network? Uh, we have like a network of people in the area who we've worked with before who like we trust and we like working with and we go back to. Yeah. Okay. Those people are so talented. Especially the ones who listen to this podcast and also second <laughs> shoot for us. They're the most <laughs> talented ones. I'm, I'm picturing, isn't it a thing in the States where if you need like some construction labor, you just go to like um, Home Depot yep. at, at seven o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Is, it, is it like that? Yep. You go? Pretty much. Just go to the local <laughs> camera shop at seven o'clock in the morning. Look for that retired guy that's like debating whether he's going to trade in his gear or not. And you're like, hey, man, you look like, uh, hey, hey. Look like you got 100 bucks. Like you got some good shoes on. Let's go shoot a wedding today. <laughs> Now you joke about that, but one of our second shooters is, does is the rental manager for one of the local camera shops. Perfect. Oh, there you go. I hope he listens. Yeah. Or so she. when when he shoots with us, uh, he just grabs a camera from the place that wasn't rented out for the day. Sweet. How I got my start. What do you mean? I used to work for a camera <laughs> rental place. Oh, are you being serious? Yeah, I worked for a camera rental well, uh, place when I was in college, and so uh, the photographer who hired me to shoot weddings. Um, got quite a bargain because I could really do it for inexpensive and I had access to millions mm-hmm. of dollars worth of equipment. So I could get him nice. lenses, I could get me lenses, all for free. Millions of dollars, millions. Are you sure it's not billions? Billions of dollars. <laughs> oh, bill- yeah, I thought so. It immediately increases by uh, tenfold when I touch it. So. <laughs> oh, I see. Right. Just for that second. Yep. And then, back, yep. then it's off. And then uh, on, the Nikon off. glows when I touch it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure Sony's ready for me yet. Mm. What? So yeah, let me know because are uh, you shooting with the seven <laughs> three? Is that what you're rocking? Yeah, yeah, a couple of seven threes. Yeah, seven threes, and I got the thirty five mil one point four, and the baddest one three five, and a sixteen to thirty five f four. Yeah, my That's my neat. one of my guys that was shooting with me last weekend, he just got. I want to say it's like a twenty eight badass. Twenty five. What are these badass lenses you guys are talking about? Badass. Uh, Zeiss. Zeiss make this range of um, lenses, mate, called B A T I S or B A T T I S. Badass. But, oh, and I heard mm-hmm. someone call it Batiste Ooh, the other French. day, so that got me all confused. <laughs> Well, where's Zeiss? Is it German? Uh, oh, God. I, to, I thought I it was it Swiss. Now. Oh, well, yeah. Swiss, German, French. So, yeah, Batiste. 
Anyway, they are specifically for Sony mirrorless full frame. And the the minimum um, focal length, focal distance, I believe, is what you how you phrase that, was incredible. Yeah. Oh, on the twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, they're borderline macro. Yeah, like he could get um, so close. We were using it for video on the gimbal, and he could get like freaky close on the dance floor, and it would just be like tack sharp. You could just see every pore of their yeah. face, every pore. Yeah, how close are you getting? That's cool. Now, this I have to mention the 40 mil. So there's there's a 40 mil mm-hmm. baddest coming out, I don't know, in the next month, Ooh. and they, they advertise it as a macro. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it should be quite good. You can get right in there yeah. into the pause. You guys were talking about the forty mil in your last episode, right? Yeah, Tom's. Yeah, he's really uh, frothing over it. Um, I will check it out. I- I'll try it out. <laughs> Tom's frothing over it. You're just gonna check it out. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna wipe Tom's froth off of it, and then I'm gonna take a peek at it. <laughs> uh, I'll have a look, and then give it back to him and <laughs> froth all over it again. <laughs> froth a late. So. You live in New Zealand. Tom lives in Australia. But based on like you guys' podcast, it sounds like uh, sounds like you guys actually see each other quite a bit throughout the year. Oh yeah, or maybe that's just the uh, the magic of podcasting <laughs> that makes it seem like that. Well, he he visited me uh, three weeks ago, um, and uh, we were I was in Aussie last year for oh, no this year for a wedding, but we lived in Australia for six or oh, six or seven months two mm-hmm. years ago and we stayed with Tom for a lot of that so yeah and we've we've sort of stayed in quite close contact for the last few years yeah and whenever we go over there we tend to like go and visit they've got a new house now so we have to go and visit it as soon as possible <laughs> go so when you're in Australia though you're typically shooting weddings while you're there right yeah for the last few years um because I was kind of moving between New Zealand and Australia I I just um I had like a couple of Facebook ads and I was, I was getting a few weddings in Aussie. I think I did 10. And, uh, but now I, I don't, I don't advertise mm-hmm. in Aussie. So no, everything now is in New Zealand. Um, I do get the odd inquiry from Australia, but once people kind of realize the, um, what it takes to get a photographer from New Zealand to Australia. What, what does it take? It's, they, they, it's just, you got to add a few grand on or a couple of grand for flights and accommodation. And so it's expensive. I didn't know if it was inexpensive to get from one to the other. Yeah. It's, um, well, it's like three or f- between three and $500 for uh, each way for a flight. Okay. But the other thing is like, you know, I can shoot two weddings in a weekend in New Zealand, but if I go to Aussie, I can yeah. only do that one wedding. So I'm, I lose a day and uh, basically you do two in Australia that weekend. Exactly. But I find that in, inquiries come in and they're like really keen that, you know, just we want to book you, you come to Australia and then you kind of talk it through and they're like, ah, oh, yeah, no, this is a bad idea. We're going to go with a local. And I've seen it heaps of times. Mm-hmm. So it's all, I don't mind. It's fine. I think that was a um, question, Steve, when I was saying that there's a really good one. It was about how these guys travel so much for weddings. Now that we yeah. know that one's dead. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> cross that well, one off. I think uh, Tom said he was gonna spend like a, a while in Europe. I think that's why I wrote it down. And he was trying yeah. to put together weddings there by running Facebook ads. And that's the right. idea of putting together w- wedding work by running Facebook ads is just so foreign to me. Oh, I really? Feel like here in Indiana, if we run Facebook ads, it's like it has a negative impact on our business. Really? Yeah, I've tried it. Yeah, I've got family in South Carolina, and so I've tried running numerous Facebook ads trying to promote wedding photography there because we have inexpensive airlines that fly f- directly from Indiana to South Carolina um, that would only cost me like a couple hundred bucks round trip and cool. then stay with family for free. And I was like, oh, this would be awesome. Run these Facebook ads. Nothing. I've never gotten a single. And this could be my lack of knowing how the hell to run Facebook ads. Are you um, targeting the right people? Yeah, I'm targeting people in Australia, but I'm trying to get weddings oh, in. Uh, ah, right. <laughs> yes, I, I think I am targeting <laughs> uh, um, people in the South Carolina, South Carolina area there. Because the big, the big trick is to uh, target engaged women. That's the. I, I see. I like to go like, the other route, Greg. I like to go specifically for the men. Um, oh, I'm right. After, the men. I'm after the southern um, men that make decisions in the wedding planning process. It's a niche 
community, but I find that um, oh. the, the weddings tend to be better. See, I think I made a mistake because I told Facebook I only wanted to target people who had recently ended a relationship on their Facebook account. So, <laughs> yeah, that's why we do more weddings than you, Steve. Break up, break up uh, photography. That's a, that's a booming business. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I just saw something about breakup photography. Um, another photography niche is um, photography for people that have died and they need a really nice photo on their uh, their casket. So mm-hmm. you've got to go out with like old people, like a round of golf or something, get a nice photo of them knowing that that's the photo they're going to use. This is, this is true. <laughs> we do this on this the wedding true. day. <laughs> you're like now listen I, this I, one photo oh my wife is notorious for this she's like she targets the elderly at weddings and <laughs> it, it all started with a wedding five years ago where the the grandmother passed away the week after the wedding and they ask hey i know you have you know a couple weeks to get these wedding photos back but can we get that photo of grandma for the wedding or for the funeral and I was like, oh, yeah, of course, obviously. And uh, and then I was like, hey, there might be something to this business. You like? And so at every <laughs> wedding, ching, we, ching. we try to make beautiful portraits of the grandparents and any other people it's that true. are important of elderly age. Young people, no pictures of them. Forget the kids. No, no, no. 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 And then no, we don't nothing. include those on the couple's uh, USB drive. The old people yeah, pictures? <laughs> put those only on their online gallery. Put put a put a big big watermark. <laughs> you put a watermark on it on their online gallery, and the watermark is just a dollar sign over their face, and maybe a little uh, yeah 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 a little a little um, six thousand dollars or something at the bottom. That's right. <laughs> their life insurance inquire can cover it. inquire. Oh, exactly. It's just the same price as a nice casket. <laughs> Should we be approaching funeral insurance companies? I, I like where your head is on this, Greg. <laughs> this this is it. <laughs> it's just one photo. How many photos we have to take at weddings? Thousands. Yeah, if you could be paid what you get paid for a wedding to photograph people before they die, I think I could be in on that game. Nice. All right. Cool. Okay. We'll just put a pin in that. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to get some hate mail on that one. <laughs> but that's why I'm staying quiet. I'm just letting you talk about this. Yeah, he's Go just for dig, it, dig deep. Just dig deeper. You guys can uh, find Dustin at Dustin <laughs> underscore McKibben. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what though, you're right because um I shot a wedding for my cousin um years ago, 5 years ago, and unfortunately uh his dad passed away about a month ago, so that's my uncle. The family had split up, so the uncle, I didn't really know him that well. I hadn't spent a lot of time with him. So you made a lot of money off that sale? It was yeah, big big time. Um, no, 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 but it was, hum- it was nice for me because the, uh, my parents went and they brought back the pamphlet, you know, that the, mm-hmm. at the funeral, you get the, the, the one with the hymns and the photo of uncle Noel, uh, was one that I took at their wedding. And then you were and like, like well, wow, I'm going to have to send that to my that attorney photo. because that is like, yeah. copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to call for a cease and desist on these <laughs> funeral pamphlets. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I was very, I was quite happy about that. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. Jen and I had like a really horrible situation a few years ago where a couple we shot, the groom passed away (sighs) and uh, it was maybe like a month or two after the wedding. And uh, the photo that I took of him when he was getting ready is the photo that they used for like everything. Uh, Wow. It was one of those things where it was like a really good photo of him. And like, I was mm. quite proud of like the photo when I saw it and how it came out and everything. Um, but now like it's still in my Instagram feed somewhere. And like, if I ever see it, I get like this horrible feeling. Cause it's like, that's like the, one of the last photos of this person, you know, like, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. When you hear stories like that, I, I do feel like it kind of makes you approach what we do a little differently. Because you're like, it mm-hmm. kind of brings a whole different idea of the value of these images now will bring to that family's life. And so, mm-hmm. I don't know, because I think a lot of people think, oh, wedding photography, I'm just going to get somebody with, you know, a camera. Like, how important is it to really have, like, good photos on your wedding? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of families don't have photos taken very often. And so, for us at a wedding, it's, it is about the bride and groom, but it's also about everyone else. It's a good, good, good thing to remember. Just and it's it's kind of sucks because just just when you think okay, I've done, I've done whatever. Like okay, we've just had all the bridal portraits. 
they've had their walk back into the reception. Everyone's having dinner and it's like, I'm thinking I can have a break. And I'm thinking, well, I haven't got a single photo of auntie such and such or uncle, whatever. So your job really never finishes on a day because you can fill in all those gaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what you're saying is you don't eat on a wedding day? Pretty much. I love I love that someone said once um, on a wedding day, like you have zero, like you take in zero calories from a, a 10 a.m. till 7 p.m. And then in four minutes, you take in a full day's worth of food. <laughs> that is very true. And then you go back to work. <laughs> I will say, though, we get a little spoiled when my wife is uh, breast pumping um, because she has to like definitely make sure she intakes a certain amount of calories to keep mm. up her supply. And so I get so all, the best, eat, and yeah, eating I get all the best snacks because I always forget nice. to pack snacks and food and stuff. And she's got Lunchables. I don't know if they have those where you are, but it's like the prepackaged cracker <laughs> cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you like me where if your wife's eating, you have to eat oh, it? You have to be eating as well? Absolutely. But if you're eating, well, she doesn't necessarily have to exactly. eat. <laughs> well, except my wife is always eating, so <laughs> All right. she has the metabolism of a young child, whereas I was cursed with the metabolism of a f- person that's past dead. Dustin, if you just started expressing milk as well, then you're, <laughs> your metabolism would go I would go love up. to express milk. Anything to get this metabolism going. It doesn't involve a gym. Greg, do you want to answer some questions from just random people on the internet? Oh, okay. We'll just do like one or two of these. By random, he means all questions from your guys' Facebook group. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. They don't have a Facebook group, just a Facebook page. Same difference. Oh, yeah. I noticed that about you guys. You have a group, whereas we have a the page. super secret group, Greg. What does that mean? Uh, like Fight Club. Group, it, we, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, we chose to do a group as well as doing a page because... Um, we we did something with the Wedding Photographers Unite podcast, and they have a group. And it was like, in their group, people were asking a lot of questions that people wouldn't ask on the page because the group is private. And so you can't mm. see the stuff posted in the group unless you're in the group. Fight Club. So then people, yeah, so people aren't yeah. as afraid to ask questions that might okay. make their business look bad or something like okay. that. Yeah, Because they know the only other people seeing it will be other photographers. So that's like why the group was created because it harbors a better sense of community. We feel like it's also it's yeah, nice. also a great place for people to come and like you know comfort me from all of the episodes where Steve berates me and tears me down. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of a support group in, at it times for me. Build you yeah, back up exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. So you get a nice like yo yo effect. Yep. They build you up and then podcast back yep. down. Yeah, you need to uh, you need to start another group just called Team Dustin for all the Dustin fans out there. I'm telling you, Dustin's discussions. Dustin's discussions. <laughs> Fireside <laughs> chats with Dustin's discussions. <laughs> All right, yeah, so, hit me, hit me. Let's do some Q and A. But Steve, Claire from the Facebook groups asks us, or just asks randomly, uh, does anyone have any tips for setting up a vendor shoot? I'm new to the industry and looking for experience. Vendor shoot. There, Greg, that would be. Um, I'm guessing Claire is referring to like a uh, like a styled shoot, like a co- like a collab. Yeah, styled shoot. Um, 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 get get good looking people. Done. Number one. Easy. <laughs> get those kids from the street to use for video. Okay. First of all, first of all, go outside your local camera store. <laughs> And, and then is it like a fight to the death as to who who you choose? Yeah, <laughs> the last one alive. I think so. Take take them. Um, style shoot. You know what? I've probably done two style shoots in my whole career. I I this just I, have you guys done a lot of them? Yeah, I've done two. I think as well. Maybe maybe three. Jen and I try to do like one a year. That you organize? Uh, <laughs> I don't organize that. Jen organizes that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> the royal you. Yeah. I, I did I did a little shoot uh, a few weeks ago for a, um, it was not wedding related it was for this clothing company but you see we've just come through winter and if someone asks you to do something in winter in New Zealand for me I'm like yeah I'll whatever I'm free I'll have a go um, the thing that I didn't like was this lady organized it and it was in the middle of the day so you've got the light strike coming down you definitely want to just think about doing it in the evening anything like that you want to do it in dusk right you want to be like an hour before sunset. That's kind of number one. Any any time you can get that low light, and then just uh, 
vendor shoots, it depends who's organizing it. Are you going to be doing a cake? Are you going to be just doing clothing? I kind of don't really know how to how to approach that one. Mm -hmm. Have you, from the couple that you have done, have there been any um, terrible experiences or were it all pleasant? No, it was all good. Yeah, pretty mellow. Do you guys, like if it was me, if someone's, do you get, like, I got paid, but would you normally get paid for a vendor shoot? Sometimes you don't, right? Because yeah, it's, it's more of like a portfolio for advertising. building kind of thing for all the vendors involved. A lot of times it's completely free. And and my one piece of advice would be don't be precious about ownership of the images. Just just mm -hmm. take the photos, edit them and send them out there and just forget about them. Yeah. Just move on. And don't use them for your portfolio. But just you want real weddings for your portfolio. Yeah, I would say one word of advice uh, on a serious note that I found from the style shoot I did last year is make sure the vendors you're selecting like each other. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's a florist <laughs> that we love working with here in town, but she's very opinionated about other vendors. And so we you, we at the last like 11th hour type thing, we we're like, oh, we should bring on a coordinator to kind of help us bring this whole thing full circle. And turned out the florist and the coordinator like hated each other. That made it like real awkward the day yeah, of the shoot. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. So I guess yeah, you just got to get everyone talking. Yeah, I, that's nice though. If if you can organize it as the photographer, then you've got that control. I was trying to be that person, and then I realized I was trying. I was getting a little out of my depth on like candlesticks and like sourcing different things. Oh yeah. And so I was like, oh, this coordinator slash decorator person, you know, she might be a good asset to get some of those finishing touch things that'll make it look a little more polished. Mm. And um the florist was like, Well, I had all that stuff I could have brought and I hate you know, she's so unprofessional. I hate her. I was like, uh, uh I already kinda told her she could be a part <laughs> of this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um now, see, when I hear Claire asking for tips for setting up a vendor shoot, I'm I'm guessing what she's thinking is, how do I even like approach vendors? How do I even get them to okay. agree to do the shoot, like a styled shoot with me? And I mean, for that, what I would say to Claire is, you want to do a lot of research on the vendors. You want to find out as much information as you can about them. And you probably hear this and you're thinking to yourself, yes, because then I can approach them in a way that will make them feel comfortable and respected and want to work with me. But I'm actually going the other route with this. I think then you can like find a way to kidnap their dog. So now you have their dog and if they want the dog back, they have to do the shoot what with you. What if they don't have a dog, Steve? A kid, a cat, <laughs> a pl house plant, you know, whatever. All, they're all on the same level. Yeah, you just got to find whatever's <laughs> precious to them. Uh, if you can get access to their bank account, just all the money out of Perfect. there. Perfect. I love where you're going with <laughs> this. Nice. So, blackmail. Mm -hmm. I, 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 did I say blackmail? I don't think I said blackmail. Yeah, great. Who's that, who's gray that drunk woman behind you, Steve? <laughs> That's Jen. She's looking at me quizzically because she does not like this advice I just gave. Somebody's going to come and <laughs> steal something from us now. <laughs> Well, you'll know what to do. Your job. <laughs> so if you come home and one of your children are gone, Stephen, I had nothing to do with it. But just know I expect you to do a style shoot with me. I'm there for you, buddy. I'm 100% there. Um, so one more question. User uh, J Smith Photography in the R Wedding Photography, uh, the subreddit Wedding Photography on Reddit says, as I increase my prices, I seem to be getting fewer and fewer winter weddings. Does anyone have any tips for booking winter dates? Mm -hmm. uh, well, listen, okay. You, you probably adjust your pricing, right? That's deep. I mean, That's put your price down deep. a little bit for winter. Is that too profound? Is that is that like cutting, a wedding cutting to the class to the core there. of the matter? That. <laughs> yeah. How to book off season right weddings? There. How to Lower book your prices? Winter weddings one oh one. Lower your prices. <laughs> yeah, maybe he could get like some sweet. Um, what are those awesome uh, dogs? Like um, some wolves or something to come along with him, so that with the wedding photos, you get those amazing fluffy dogs. He looks like the guy from uh, Game of Thrones when he shows up to winter weddings. Winter is coming. Hire me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> mm, yeah, now I'm seeing a series of Facebook ads for the company yep. that all say winter is coming and winter all feature Jon Snow. 
Uh, yes. And you don't have to tell anybody that you don't actually know Kit Harrington and you didn't shoot those. You just roll it out there. There you go. I would just Photoshop my face bada onto bing. his face. Copyright infringement. <laughs> bada bing. I don't think so. Dumb. Yeah. Find a good shirtless picture of Kit Harrington and Photoshop sure. your face right onto it. Just with wolf skin. <laughs> You, so you've got the wolf skin, and then you've also got living wolves around you. So you have a dead yeah. wolf and living wolves. Well, well, you got all the wolves. Yeah. Um, and you, you got to have something every... to keep the living wolves in check. You got to let them know you're the boss. Like, if you get out of line at this wedding, look what happened to the last wolf that got out of line. Or, or how about you take it a step further, and it's like a, instead of wolf skin, it's like bride's dresses. You're like, brides, if you get out of hand... Nope, that's no. Nope. Um, <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> nope, we won't go there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've good, stolen I, the last five brides <laughs> that I've worked with their dresses after the shoot. Do you want this to happen to you? Do my vendor shoot. <laughs> You're back to the the blackmail is. <laughs> We're very threatening. You, here you in and your threats. <laughs> yeah, that's how we get elected. That's how we get hired. That's all we know. Trump land. <laughs> You know, uh, okay, okay. Uh, back to um, my MBA. Uh, <laughs> one one thing that helped me with winter shoots is I did a snow shoot um, and I got uh, some really great shots and I put those on my website. I put them on my homepage because I figure, well, a good wedding shoot, good wedding photo is a, is a good wedding photo. Mm. It just so happens this one's in winter. So people see it and they go, oh, this guy can take a good winter wedding photo. So he's like, We'll, we'll pay him lots of money, if you see what I mean. And this is the whole... Mm -hmm. uh, okay, back to my MBA. This is point number three. Is there a PowerPoint? Uh, no, you should be taking notes, son. There'll be a test at the end of this. This is the <laughs> age-old um, mantra of you want to... Ah, uh, shit, how does it go? You, you want to um, show the work that you want to shoot. Show what you mm -hmm. want to shoot. Got it. All right. Yeah, yeah. A couple of S's in there. <laughs> Got it. In there. <laughs> I'm just going to put New Zealand wedding photos on my website. Sweet. I think we just solved S plus S equals show the work you want to shoot. Well, but with the wolf skins. <laughs> <laughs> to keep people in line and wolves in line. North American wolf skins. Got it. Can you bring me some? We don't have wolves. Can you bring? We'll talk. <laughs> you got to hide them really well, though, because they don't let them in. In New Zealand, we, they won't go through customs, but I'll I'll tell you. Don't, wor don't worry, S squirrel skins very similar. They just no problem. Well, th hang on, wait. Are we? This is a thing. I'll sell squirrel skins in New Zealand as wolf skins. We're gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> now you now you're talking my language. <laughs> I've got a I've got a guy. I've got a guy. Yeah, I got a guy who imports squirrel skins. <laughs> Um, do we answer that question? <laughs> oh, this is a perfect answer. Here, here, here in Indiana, it's like all my family does is hunt. So I've got I've got a plethora of of uh, pelts, as we call them. Oh yeah, pelts. Hey, skins is a little barbaric. That is going to do it for us. Thank you so much for coming on our podcast, Greg and Tom too. When he was here, uh, that was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed doing that. Well, we're going to cut when we thanked him earlier. Yeah, we're we? going to cut, cut that cut back that. in. This is just for Greg's. For Greg himself. Just, I want him to know oh, okay. we appreciate him. So oh, is that okay with you? Oh, thank you, guys. Is that okay? I, I feel Just making sure I'm on the same script that our script writer wrote. Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, Dustin and Steve, thanks so much. It was really nice. It was awesome. Um, it was cool. Tom and I, we do our thing. We're kind of in our little bubble, mm -hmm. and it was great to break out. And Welcome and, to the uh, bigger bubble. Yeah, we're all... Uh, our bubbles are connecting. Look at that. And it's like a four person bubble connection <laughs> there you go so tom you did say you had a hard stopping time of two which it is to your time now i believe one thing i wanted to do before the end of this on your guys's last episode you said on your next episode you're going to talk about um a shot list one of you was given and so before you left, I wanted to see if you could just give like a teaser to our fans about what what it is you're going to be talking about with this shot list. Just uh, some, something to make them want to run over to your podcast and listen to what you have to say. Um, OK, yeah. So I um, shot a wedding two weeks ago and uh, I'd already done an engagement shoot with a couple. 
very, very um, onto it couple, both, you know, very successful. Uh, the one guy works for Main Freight, which is a New Zealand uh, freight company, but they actually have depots in Australia and in the States. Big, big, really, really cool company. Um, and uh, very much, a, what do you call that? An A-type personality, both of them. Mm-hmm. Nice people. Extremely nice. Anyway, uh, five days before the wedding, I get a uh, an email saying, hey, hey, Greg, we just put together a, a shoot list. It's And they said, you know, it's kind of for you, but it's kind of for us as well, just to keep track of what's happening during the day. All good. You know, check it out. So I open it and it's uh, four pages uh, of sh- sh- like a four page shoot list right from boys getting ready all the way to, you know, dance floor shots. And so uh, the first thing I do is send it to Tom and go, hey, Tom, you have to check oh. this out. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, so I actually, the videographer got the same shot list. And what we will probably end up talking about is um, the way I reacted to receiving that shot list. I sent them an email and I can, I'll probably, I'm trying not to say too much now, right? Okay. So we um, don't want you to say too much. So, Tom, can you just say how you think Greg would have reacted to that? I think he uh, did some typical New Zealand thing, like threw a pavlova at them or <laughs> did, or I don't know, or went over to their house and was like, Oi, a, a jandal. I, I don't really like that shot list because it's a bit too long. <laughs> he threw a jandal at them. Yeah. Like, I only have but, one sheet of paper in my printer. <laughs> I have all these Yongnua flash boxes that are empty, <laughs> and I'm going to throw them at your house. Okay. <laughs> that's how I went down. That's, okay, so that's one, that's one possibility. <laughs> he says as he holds a Yongnua box menacingly. <laughs> if I had thrown them, I'd have less to throw right now. They took it out on the rugby field. <laughs> yeah, we did. That's how we just. That's how we uh, sort all disputes in New Zealand. Who can do the best drop kick? You're like, <laughs> are we going to do that groomsman photo? Let's take this to the field. <laughs> drop kick contest, and that's half an hour of the day gone. Before, before, before you go, real quick, where can people go to find out more about you? Well, what's our what's our snapping website? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's the the snapping dot net. <laughs> <laughs> Can't they just go up to their their Alexa and just start snapping and it just takes it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, it's a brand new website actually. Ooh, oh, that's so cheap. sweet. And from there, from there, you can find my. I think. Wait, Greg, are our sites on there? Yo. Okay, from there you can find our sites as well. But if not, by the time this goes live, you will be able to. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah right. as I oh, frantically. Really? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, no, you can see the snappening.net. We're on there. Um, you can find have, uh, Tom Facebook, and me. Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, like there are links to our Facebook and our Instagram there as well. There's a Pinterest. Your cookbook is on there. All oh, that yeah. Good stuff. Got the Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're super prepared. Oh, there she comes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Time to go. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast with Dustin and Steve. If you want to help us out, jump on iTunes or Stitcher and leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Wedding Photo Hangover or on Twitter at Wedpick Hangover. Dustin is on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben and Steven is at Steven Van Elk. If you want to get involved with the awesome community of listeners, join the Wedding Hangover Facebook group. If you really want to warm our hearts, head on over to anchor.fm slash wedding photo hangover and you can sign up to support us for as little as 99 cents a month it's extremely helpful to us and to the making of this podcast thanks for listening and we'll see you next time your head is pounding your limbs feel like dead weight and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death that's right Mm. next sunday after you shoot another wedding wearing wolf skin wolf (laughs) wolf coats covered in wolf this oh. winter is coming, Stephen. Kind of like ties into the whole Halloween esqueness. Except it'll be released after Halloween. Dozen. Damn. Thank you so much for doing that interview with me with uh, Greg so and Tom. So we're in the future now. Yes. We're in the future. What? We transitioned. Oh. Uh, in ten minutes, we will be in in the same. Pr- we'll be in the present with Greg and Tom in ten minutes. <laughs> Listeners, you have to wait. 10 minutes and we'll be in the same time zone. But I have to go now. So have a great night, Dustin. Bye. Bye.
So we're just trying to be the Greg and Tom of America. That's you are <laughs> our inspiration. Thanks. Well, I think you're doing pretty well at that. So we're going to sell some T-shirts to say the Greg and Tom of America. On the back, yes. it's going to say hashtag wedding photo hangover. So nice. feel free to sell those for us. Cool. We're, yeah, on, we're honored to be. <laughs> we're honored to be chatting. Yeah, we still feel like we're trying to be the Greg and Tom of New Zealand and <laughs> Australia. Like we, we <laughs> One last thing real quick before the end of the episode. Just want to give a big shout out to greetable.com. That's G-R-E-E-T-A-B-L dot C-O-M for sponsoring this episode and making it possible for everybody to hear this. If you guys want to get a great deal, as we said before, use code HANGOVER20. That's H-A-N-G-O-V-E-R. Two zero, and check down in the show notes. It's got all the info will be there. Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs.